Everybody can and will. Please stand. Be able and will. Genesis chapter 22 begins with verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take my son, their only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the mountains of Moriah, and offer him as for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Mr. Travis, we blessed us today with We read that said, and it come to pass after these things. We look at the things here. This is one of the great high points of the Bible. We are walking on another mountain peak of the book of Genesis. And over my Bible, I know there's another mountain to climb. It seems like we all have another mountain to climb, don't we? It says here that. Chapter 22 is the account of Abraham offering his only, well, his the, the promised son to God. God commanded him to offer Isaac on the altar and then restrained him at the last minute. And he, he thought Abraham was willing to go through with it. But after these things, uh, we see that here that Abraham, uh, he did these things. We know that Abraham was promised many things and he was promised a, a new land in Genesis 12, a promise uh, of a, a new life. He was to obey, not knowing where he was going. He so journeyed with Isaac and Jacob in tents. He was dwelling in tents, looking for a permanent dwelling. And it says here in uh, Hebrew 11, we all the chapter of faith, it said, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go into a place where he should, after he received for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he so journeyed to a land of promise, and in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles or tents, with Isaac and Jacob and heirs with him in the same promise, where he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was halfway in his journey, and after these things, the Bible just got uh, talking about, he made peace with the Egyptian. He lied about his wife, Sarah. He has now made peace with that. He made a covenant with uh, Hagar and Ishmael, boy, which we still have problems with today. But Abraham was halfway uh, from Ur to his final destination near here. And he settled down, He, uh, but he had to finish the race. And God gave him another mountain to climb. And he was uh, what we called, he said, he, were, he was sitting in beside the green pastures and by, beside the still waters. His, happy, his life was settled. He was happy. He was halfway. He got his promised son. Things was going well. And God called him at the halfway point. He said, but you're going to have to finish the race. And Sarah planned to help God. You remember that on her own. A lot of times we want to step in and help God, don't we? We that problem today. We still handle in the Middle East crisis. God said, I promise you your child through Sarah and not by Ishmael. Egypt is always the picture of of the old life of sin, but he, he made uh, peace with those people and things was going good. He was at a good place. And it said here that come to pass after these things that God did tempt him or prove him or test him, wanting to him to come to obedience. And he said, Now take thy son, their only son, the promised one, thou whom thou lovest. 
That's the first time in the Bible that love is mentioned in a picture of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son for a sacrifice. And get thee into the land of Moriah. And that is a mountain range. And it was uh, has to do with Calvary's on that mountain range, Zion, the Mount of Olives, the uh, Moriah. It's all the same mountain range. And in the mountains, you know, uh, you look far away and it looks like all the mountains are close together to peak. But we know they are far apart and we see their mountain ranges. But all these are on the same mountain range. And I really believe that Abraham was going to take his only begotten son to a place called Calvary. And he had another mountain to climb. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. He sat on his ass and took two of the young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, so that kind of brings your attention to the third day, for in Abraham's heart and mind, his son was dead for three days. But he knew and he thought that Abraham was going to raise him up again on that third day. Because it says here in uh, Hebrews 11, 19, it says that uh, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall their seed be called the count that God was able to raise him up even, even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. He had faith in God that even if God slayed him, they would come back together and he would be resurrected. The picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the picture of love. And it says here, I want you to follow me if you have your Bibles. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. This is the verse which I want to get my context from. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here. You know what? Some things only can, a transition only can be taken between the Father and the Son. You remember on Calvary when they were hanging on the cross and God brought the darkness in? That was something only that could be done between the Father and the Son. Abraham, this had to be done between the Father and the Son. And Abraham told the young men with him, Abide ye here with the ass, and I, and I will take the lad and will go up yonder and sacrifice. Is that what it said? He said, I'm going up and worship. Now I want to tell you about one thing. Hey, uh, it says here that Sarah had Isaac when she was nine. And the next the chapter uh, quickly says that Sarah died when she was 127 years old. And Isaac was a young man, probably in the upper, almost 30, if not 30 to 33. He carried the wood up to the mountain. He was old enough. He could overtake Abraham. He could uh, probably uh, disobey, but he laid down upon the sacrifice. Why? Because he trusted God. Here that Abraham said that, you know, all if he would have been a Baptist, he didn't want to disobey God. He didn't want to disobey his father. He had faith, and he laid himself down, a 30-year-old boy, strong, carried the wood up. I mean, that's faith in itself. He didn't want to disappoint his dad. And during this, God brings back things to my men. Uh, I tell you, one time I really dis uh, uh, hurt my daddy's feeling. And I told you before, it was toward the end of the year. And, and up there, and I had an old bicycle. I hand-painted Richard Petty Blue. Not smart, but we know what Richard Petty Blue is up there. Painted a bicycle, had handle grips on it. And it had a hand grip kept slipping off. I mean, you go to those hills about four, we lived out at the bottom of the creek, and the banks went up pretty big slope and grade, and when you barred down on that power stroke, you pulled back to them handlebars, and a lot of time wanted to slip off. And there I would go, I would get mad. 
And uh, we we went to uh, Smithy's, a general store. And we went Saturday morning with my dad. He was working. We got something to eat. And there was some blue handlebars. I mean, they was uh, metal flakes. And they had these streamers hanging off. And I said, man, that would really upgrade my bicycle. And I said, Dad, I need those handle grips. I mean, I wanted them. I could, I could see them on my bicycle. It, uh, he said, no, son, not now. But we'll talk about it later. Being the only boy in the baby, I could understand it. And I, I even gave him a solid treatment. I know I hurt his feelings, and I wouldn't mean I would tell him. I think what God will give you directions, but He won't give you details. He's not going to give you a garment step by step uh, in your life what's going to happen next. You've got to trust Him. When He can't see His hands, you've got to trust His heart. And my dad said, No, you don't, not, those, not today, son. You're not getting those handlebars. If it was less than. Hundred dollars, and I wanted it fixed a little fit. Patty calls it brown fit, but I fixed a little fit. No, son, you can't have those handlebars. Oh, I got mad. I mean, I pouted. But soon Christmas come around, and it snowed that day, and Daddy pushed out a brand new bicycle, top of the line. He said, on that day, he said, when we went there to Smithy's, I laid you away a brand new bicycle. Top of the line, sturdy, metal flake, bright red. He said, if you didn't need to hand the bars, I had something better for you. A lot of times God tells you no for a lot of different reasons. And a lot of times God will give you another mountain to climb. Uh, seem like everyone once in a while things were going good in our life. What well, things would go smooth, we would decide to steal waters and green pastures, and God said, I have another mountain for you to climb. Went to the city, see the doctor and every so often had that check. I'm glad God didn't tell us the end. Well, I know the end. I read the last chapter. I, I, I know, I'm, I'm glad he didn't tell me how it couldn't play out. But when you can't see his hand, you got to trust his heart. But Abraham went to that place, his only begotten son that he loved, a picture of Jesus Christ, to a place, Moriah, and he said, I went. And I would have said, if he would have been a good old Baptist, he said, I went up there to sacrifice he said, no, I'm going on that mountain and I'm going to worship. Has come to church, has prayed, has singing in the choir, has coming and, and praising God become an a inconvenience? Is it a sacrifice or do you come to worship? When you come singing the choir, is it an inconvenience? Is it a sacrifice of your time and your place? When you teach these little children, you want to save their soul from the devil's hell? Has it became more of a sacrifice? Or do you come and get worship to the Lord? If anybody here, it would be a sacrifice today. Could you come to worship? I come to worship. One time I started questioning God like Peter did. Lord, what about these people who gave up their houses and their friends and their family? What do we have in for our reward in heaven? I read half of that verse and I said, no, I cannot read that. I can't question God because he's been so, so good to me. I have not given up one thing. And when I come, I know I'm in the will of God, I come to worship. I tried to one day to whine to God and ask him, I said, why do you, what, what you going to have for me, Lord? You, you, what, down on having my pity party? I said, I gave up my friends, my family, my grandkids. I came here. Lord, you know where I'm at. What do you have for me? And I couldn't even get through it. I was so embarrassed. I said, Lord, thank you for being so, so good to me. He just poured me close and screeched me up. 
Every time I get my bicycle out, yes I do, I got a 20, one speed mountain bike. I got a mountain bike down the beach. And I tell you what, I had to have a 21 speed. A lot of the things I have to have, I never use. I use one gear. Life has so much more to offer. I got 20 more speeds I never reach. But I do like doing that. But my my dad said, no, not today. That's not what I have for you. Just like God, he don't give you the details in your life. He don't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. He don't going to tell you what's going to happen down the road. But he does give you directions. Tell you what, when things are coming here and coming to church and praying for one another has become a sacrifice, and I think you need to get your heart right. <laughs> when you pray for your grandkids and your children to save their souls from the devil hell, if God does something, I believe you ought to worship. Appreciate the choir. I'd rather have few people praying and singing and got their heart into it. I would the whole place singing half-heartedly. So Abraham took that to point since Isaac was offered as a type of Christ and Calvary would be the choice of the mountain, don't you think? A three-day journey, Abraham believed that Isaac was dead. And, uh, it was on that same mountain. Tell you what, there are some uh, only mountains that only me and you, you and God can climb. You know that? Abraham said, I, I've got to go by myself. Me. Hey, some mountain's going to be ahead of you. It may start with a doctor's call. It may be an appointment. But I tell you what, you can either call them sacrifice or you can say, Lord, I'm going to worship you. God saved this old wicked soul and I'm on the way to heaven. God provided every time I know give you live sermons and that was just a gospel according to Kevin but that, that taught me something. I wanted something and I tell you what we used to sing a song that uh, we all sing a prayer you know, Abraham prayed for the day God would give his son, blessed Isaac was his name, the greatest gift he ever known. Then came the day that he would have dreamed, God would say, you've got to give him to me. And on this mountain, you must prove that it's you with Isaac or me with you. I want to tell you what, we all got an Isaac. Some of it might be a at a ball field, some of it might be a fishing hole, some of it might be a, a person or thing, a, a, a camp, but I tell you what, it might be a feeling, it might be emotion. But if it keeps me between you and God, it's Isaac. And when, if God ever wants you to lay that down, you're going to find out it's not Isaac God wants, it's you. God did not want Isaac, God wanted Abraham. God don't, tell you what, God don't want your money. I ain't going to preach on tithes in the day. I'm not going to preach on not, you not attending. I'm not going to preach on you not helping the choir. You know why? When God gets you your heart, when God gets you, he got it all. He got your billfold. He got your time. He got your worship. And he got your attention. What is your Isaac today? You have an Isaac. You may have to think a little bit. You, you got something today that you can put between you and God. A lot of it's good help. You know, help can be an honor. You know, we read a book that America is getting back to the time of idols. It might be a four-wheel drive. It might be finger dread. It might be something. It might be a 12-gauge. It might have six strings on it. The fourth string. <laughs> I mean, it's something you hold on to, you find dear. It might be a person. I, I hate, even hate to say this, but in my uh, preacher, God told him to go 
to start a college in Greenville, South Carolina, out of the mountains. He said, no, God, I'll do a lot of other things, but I've got a grandchild now. I'm staying with my grandchild. You know what happened? A fuel truck turned over in the, in the curve. And that little boy being a curious, you know how boys are. He can't tie him down out in the field. He heard the crash. He went out. The tanker, he came close. The tanker blew up. God said, I took away your idol. I said, no, my God wouldn't do that. God took away a little soul that was bound for heaven to do his job. That man went to here and started college. He started, he went on to work with Temple. He went on to work with Crown Liberty. He went on and started the college I went to. And God used him. And he'll preach that. And uh, the first time I, he preached that, I said, please don't say that again. He said, I don't accept that. I don't understand that. But I tell you what, a lot of things God is going to have you to do, you're not going to understand. He didn't say go by understanding. He said in the very beginning, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. He does never try to explain himself. He's God. Because if he did, we would say, well, where did God come from? If he came from this, then something is greater than God. When is the beginning? God said, in the beginning. If you don't believe that, you don't believe anything. Close the Bible. Come up to the altar. Go, go get saved or find another church. The preaching the word of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he is the Alpha and the Omega and everything in between. <clears throat> it's why we're here. People lost their joy because their hearts divided. They got an Isaac in the way. I'm not going to come to a place where I'm uh, going to ask God to hold his feet in the fire and take the Isaac away. I'm asking him first. Put God first. God don't want you, Isaac. God wants you. God wants all you have. Isaac. They took uh, Abraham stretched. He carried the fire. A lot of people carried the fire pot, or the Indians, Indians used to do it in a buffalo horn. They carried the wood. He carried it on his back. You know, Jesus carried his own cross. And Isaac was a big strapping boy. Yes, he was. He wasn't like a little boy, like two or three years old, carrying a whole load of wood. He was a young man. That he he laid down his life. He was obedient. And what a story here. A lot of times he said, uh, well, you want to know the questions and don't understand everything in the Bible. How about digging a little bit deeper? God don't want you to, uh, to hang up your mind at the door when he came and come into church. Dig in the Bible. Get some of those questions. Answer it. No, God don't want your eyes but he wants you to. And his life now today, coming to church today, do you have to come? Oh, I have to go to church. Or can you say, I got to go? I, I get to go. I get to preach to the best people in the world. You know why God wants me here. But God laid this on my heart, and I'm going to preach it. They carry the wood and the knife and the fire symbol of sacrifice. And once again, Abraham laid his eyes up down. I believe I could see the knife go up. He was getting ready to kill his only son, his only promised son. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out and said, Abraham, he said, here am I. He said, lay not their hand to their lad, neither do anything to him. For well, I know that thou fearest God. I tell you what, you wouldn't drive a car that had been tested. You wouldn't want to fly in a plane that hadn't been proven or tested. Each one of us, if God's going to use us, he's going to test us. And they're going to be a mountain to climb. If God cannot trust you in the little things, he's not going to trust you in the bigger things. <clears throat> I know this was a big thing. If God's going to ask something big from you, he's going to, he's going to reward you and pay you and bless you greatly. 
says here, and Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, behind him was a ram. You know what a ram is? A male sheep. A male ram. Amen. A ram. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up. It said that here, said that uh, his hat, uh, ram caught in the thick of the thorns. You know what that is? A picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, head of the uh, head of crown, the thorns. The name of that place, I believe God called the name of that place Jehovah's Jireh, which is my Lord will supply. My Lord will provide. 